بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم دس از کیس آف این انفینٹ بوائے ہو واز براٹ ود دا کمپلینٹس آف سیجرز ویکنیس اینڈ فیلیئر ٹو میٹ دا ڈیولپمنٹل مائل اسٹونس سو ایز یو کین سی ان دیز ایم آر آئی ایمیجز دیٹ دیز آر دس از دی ٹی ٹو ویٹڈ ایم آر آئی سیکوینس ایکزیل اینڈ دس از ٹی ون ویٹڈ ایم آر آئی اینڈ یو کین سی دیٹ دیر از اے فگر آف ایٹ اپیئرنس آف دا برین ہیئر دیر از اے فگر آف ایٹ اپیئرنس آف دا برین ہیئر as you can see this is the figure of eight appearance of the brain and uh, it is uh, showing a thickened cortex this is the thickened cortex and the absence of normal gyral and sulcal pattern there is no uh, proper gyri or sac formation noted here also the inner surface of the uh, cortex has an irregular cobblestone you can see here this is the irregular cobblestone appearance and uh, diffuse abnormal signal intensity is uh, identified uh, throughout the brain parenchyma throughout the brain parenchyma this is the abnormal uh, diffusely abnormal uh, signal intensity also you can see here that this is an artifact which is called a susceptibility artifact and uh, this artifact is from a shunt catheter which is uh, noted overlying the right occipital this is over the right occipital and uh, posterior temporal lobes posterior temporal and right occipital lobes so this shunt catheter is giving the susceptibility artifact so uh, this is uh, a case of basically the key imaging finding here is a gyria that is there are no gyri or sulci formation noted here figure of eight appearance cobblestone pattern so uh, the main diagnosis here is of type 1 lysencephaly other than that we can put uh, type 2 lysencephaly uh, and band heterotopia in the differentials also prematurity can be included in here so this was the diagnosed case of type 2 cobblestone lysencephaly in a patient uh, with walker warburg syndrome so this was a case of type 2 cobblestone lysencephaly which is called also called cobblestone lysencephaly so type 1 is classic lysencephaly which gives the figure of eight appearance type 2 is cobblestone lysencephaly so this was a diagnosed case of type 2 cobblestone lysencephaly another case this is uh, actually a two year, two days old boy uh, presented with seizures and spasms so we can see that this is the axial t1 weighted mri and uh, there is abnormal uh, cortical thickening and absence of normal gyri and sulci here within the right occipital lobe okay so there are gyri sulci formation noted elsewhere however there are no gyri or sulci formation in the right occipital lobe also there is abnormal uh, cortical and subcortical signal intensity which is involving the right occipital and temporal lobes also it is giving abnormal signals so this is uh, uh, a case of uh, this is a case of pachygyria that is there are obviously there are no gyri there are no gyri here there is absence of gyri here so this is a case of pachygyria and uh, in the differentials uh, you can include polymicrogyria or uh, subcortical band heterotopia or schizencephaly uh, however the main differential will be uh, pachygyria and uh, also you can include hemimegalencephaly in the differentials next is uh, a case of uh, a 2 year old girl Uh, presented with developmental delay and this is the uh, image that we are provided so this is the axial uh, fair sequence this is the axial fair mri sequence and uh, it is uh, showing the asymmetry of the cerebral hemispheres okay so the asymmetry of the cerebral hemispheres is quite evident here as we can see that the right hemisphere is smaller compared to the left one and uh, also there is associated prominence of the sulci the sulci are more prominent on the right side okay so the sulci are more prominent on the right side compared to the left also there it is small in size compared to the left uh, cerebral hemisphere and uh, also an enlarged medullary vein is seen here along the here enlarged medullary vein is seen uh, along the anterior margin of the right lateral ventricle and uh, also there is a hazy parietal white matter signal intensity hazy sorry there is this this area this is the hazy uh, periatrial this is the atria atria of the lateral ventricle so this is the periatrial white matter signal intensity hazy which is corresponding to regions of terminal myelination so these are regions of terminal myelination 
So basically, the key imaging finding here is uh, the F asymmetry of cerebral hemispheres. So this is the key imaging finding that the cerebral hemispheres are asymmetrically uh, asymmetric in size. Right is smaller than left. So uh, one of the uh, so this is basically a case of Sturge-Weber syndrome. However, uh, as you can see that uh, this is, there is asymmetry of hemispheres, so we can include a uh, normal variant in the differential uh, along with encephalomalacia and uh, dyke david of mason syndrome and hemimegalencephaly of course and rasmussen encephalitis so these are few differentials where you will get asymmetric cerebral hemispheres however this is a case of this particular one is uh, the case of uh, sturge weber syndrome this is uh, another case uh, where you can see uh, that uh, we are provided uh, with the, these sequences and uh, this is a case of an adolescent who presented with seizures. So, as you can see that uh, on the here in these images, you can see that this is the axial titubated MRI and this is the flare MRI and uh, they show a hypo intense here. They show a hypo-intense uh, subependymal nodular region within the frontal horn uh, of the right lateral ventricle. So this is the this is that lesion, subependymal nodular lesion within the frontal horn of the right lateral ventricle. This lesion is uh, iso-intense to white matter. This is the white matter, and it is iso to white matter. Uh, sorry, here uh, this is the this is the uh, again this is the T1 weighted sequence. So, this lesion is uh, iso to white matter on T1 weighted MRI. So, this is the T1 weighted MRI and you can see this lesion is iso to uh, white matter. And also, uh, it is showing here, as you can see, that this lesion is showing homogeneous enhancement in the post contrast sequence here. Uh, Wedge-shaped regions of uh, cortical and uh, subcortical signal abnormalities are also noted on the T2 and uh, flare sequences you know here these are the regions of signal abnormality here cortical and subcortical this is the abnormal signal intensity area this is corresponding to that abnormal signal intensity area. flare also here you can see the abnormal signal intensity area so also here you can see subtle abnormal signal intensity area so as you can see that uh, the key imaging finding here is this subependymal nodule okay this subependymal nodule is the key imaging finding so our main uh, diagnosis will be tuberous sclerosis uh, other than that uh, you can put uh, heterotopic gray matter in the differential uh, torch infection and metastatic disease as well so Next, this is the case, and uh, as you can see here, that uh, this is the MRI, sagittal MRI of a 16-year-old boy uh, who presented with difficulties in school. So this is the sagittal T1 weighted MRI, and uh, there is a defect here. There's a defect involving the anterior body of the corpus callosum. Uh, with adjacent, you can see four encephaly here, and it, it's it communicating uh, with the lateral ventricle, and uh, the genu, uh, posterior body, the splenium, and the rostrum they are present. So also uh, the additional uh, uh, findings include signal abnormalities in the region here of the hypothalamus, okay, and uh, the posterior uh, third ventricle here is enlarged. The third ventricle is enlarged and uh, the posterior fossa is small and uh, this is the posterior fossa it is small and there is mild tonsillar ectopia here this mild tonsillar ectopia so this is basically a case of uh, callosal as you can see that there is callosal abnormality here the, there is a defect involving the anterior body of the corpus callosum so this is a case of callosal injury or encephaloclastic process post-surgical. 
However, in the differentials, the key imaging finding here, as we can see, is the callosal abnormality. So the key imaging finding is callosal abnormality. So we will put agenesis of the corpus callosum or hypogenesis of the corpus callosum also in the top differential. Other than that, we can include callosal injury uh, or secondary to some post-surgical process or encephaloclastic process. We can also put holoprosencephaly in the differential and volume loss as well. So next, this is the, the case. This is the sagittal T2-weighted uh, MRI. And it is showing that there is, uh, here you can see that uh, there is decreased volume of the cerebellar vermis and there is prominence of sulci here in the cerebellum. Uh, the brain stem, however, is appearing normal in size and morphology. So the only key finding here is the uh, volume loss of the cerebellum okay so this is the volume loss uh, of the cerebellum uh, which is shown here and this is a 20 year old man who presented with chronic ataxia and progressive neurological decline so the key imaging finding here is of cerebellar atrophy or volume loss and uh, uh, the basically the diagnosis here is ataxia telangiectasia however uh, we can put few other differentials in the list like alcohol abuse cerebellar volume loss secondary to alcohol abuse or uh, secondary to anticonvulsant therapy uh, like phenytoin is mostly given uh, to the um, epileptic patients and uh, uh, phenytoin is a culprit uh, drug for causing this cerebellar volume loss so phenytoin can uh, this can also be secondary to phenytoin toxicity or paraneoplastic syndrome or sporadic oliveponto cerebellar atrophy could also be included, Frederick ataxia uh, or ataxia telangiectasia. So this is a case of cerebellar volume loss with these differentials. Next, uh, these are the images. And this is the case of adolescent boy presented with headaches, presenting with headaches. So this is the sagittal two-weighted uh, MRI. And it is showing a large CSF signal intensity mass within the posterior fossa with anterior with anterior and superior uh, displacement of the cerebellum also there is we can see that there is compression of the uh, ventricle and associated enlargement of the uh, third ventricle associated enlargement of the third ventricle in the axial sequence uh, of the axial t2-weighted flare uh, sequence uh, this is axial T2-weighted MRI. This is the flare sequence. And uh, we can see that uh, there, this mass is following the CSF signal intensity. This mass is following the CSF here. This is the CSF. So this is, again, this mass is following the CSF signal. This mass is of CSF signal. The same CSF signal here is evident here. Here we can see that this is T1-weighted sequence and the CSF signal is, is again it's the same signal of the CSF. So this is following the CSF signal uh, on all sequences. Also there is no uh, direct communication of this uh, uh, mass with the fourth ventricle. Here this is the fourth ventricle and this mass appears to be quite distinct or separate from the fourth ventricle and also you can see that the bilateral temporal horns of the lateral ventricles are also enlarged obviously because it is causing the obstructive height cephalus. so the bilateral temporal horns are enlarged so this is uh, a case of arachnoid cyst this lesion is arachnoid cyst also uh, you can include a mega cisterna magna in the differential uh, along with dandy walker uh, malformation spectrum and uh, Joubert syndrome, that is Wormian hypoplasia, can also be included in this case. Next, so this is the image that is provided. And uh, as you can see, uh, that uh, this is the MRI of a young adult woman who presented with headache and the history of mild developmental delay. So this is the sagittal T2 weighted MRI. And it is showing the hypoplasia here. It is showing the hypoplasia of the inferior cerebellar vermis with an enlarged uh, fourth ventricle, uh, which is communicating with this retrocerebellar CSF collection. And uh, so we can see that the posterior fossa is enlarged here with uh, the inversion of the torcular lambdoid. That is, there is inversion of the torcular lambdoid inversion. So this is the case here enlarged posterior fossa 
with the uh, aplastic uh, um, or you can say hypoplastic uh, inferior cerebellar vermis and uh, inversion of the torpular lambdoid. So this is uh, basically a case of denti walker malformation and uh, in the differentials you can put rhombencephalosynapses and Joubert syndrome. These are the images. So we are presented uh, with the MRI sequences, sagittal uh, sequences, and uh, these are the MR sequences of 34-year-old man who presented with headaches and vertigo. And uh, as you can see here, this is T1, this is T1, this is T2, and uh, we can see uh, that uh, there is significant cerebellar tonsil herniation below the foramen magnum here uh, with peg-like tonsils. So the peg-like tonsils are demonstrated here. Uh, the posterior fossa is uh, quite small and uh, also the posterior fossa is small and also we can see that there is mass effect here upon the brain stem. However, uh, no syrinx is identified here. If we trace it down, so there is no syrinx here. Okay, so there is no syrinx. However, as you can see here that uh, the tonsils are uh, peg-like and they are pointing downward and they are also causing compression of the brain stem. So this is a case of uh, Chiari 1 malformation and uh, also uh, you can put uh, apparent diamoma in this, in this list of differential along with intracranial hypotension because of the sagging of the brain. Intracranial hypotension can also be included in the differential. Next, uh, this is the case and uh, as you can see uh, that uh, these are the MR images of a seven week old adopted girl uh, who presented with failure to thrive and developmental delay. So these are the images of uh, this patient and this is the axial and uh, this is the coronal unenhanced CT scan. So this is the axial CT scan and uh, this is the coronal unenhanced CT scan and it is showing that there is a large supratentorial CSF collection. Uh, all, although we can see that the fox is present here. The fox is present here. However, there is abnormal uh, large supratentorial CSF collection and uh, the thalami here, they are not fused. Okay, the thalami are uh, not fused and there is no residual brain parenchyma along the calvarial margins. So, as you can see, this is the skull and uh, in this image as well, you can see this is the skull. However, there is no residual brain parenchyma anywhere. Anywhere, there is no residual brain parenchyma. So, considering these imaging findings, uh, our top differential would be hydronencephaly. So, this is a case of hydronencephaly. However, you can put massive hydrocephalus in the differential along with the alobar holoprosencephaly and agenesis of the corpus callosum uh, with midline interhemispheric cyst and bilateral open lip schizencephaly. So, these are other differentials. However, our top differential is hydronencephaly. Next case, uh, we are uh, presented here with the contrast enhanced uh, axial CT scan and this is uh, an adolescent patient who presented with seizures. So as you can see that uh, here the lateral ventricles are showing a gray matter lined a CSF cleft which is communicating with the frontal horn of the right lateral ventricle. Okay, so this is the there is a cleft here. This is the cleft and uh, this is lined with gray matter. This is important. It is lined with gray matter. This is the cleft and it is communicating with the frontal horn of the right lateral ventricle and also uh, there is absence of the septum pellucidum. There is absence of the septum pellucidum. So this is uh, a quite diagnostic picture for schizencephaly type 2, open lip uh, schizencephaly. So this is uh, the top uh, diagnosis or the top differential would be schizencephaly. However, for uh, the sake of differentials, you can put poor encephalic cyst here or encephalomalacia.
next case. Uh, so this is a young adult who presented with severe mental retardation. So these are MRI sequences, sagittal, uh, T1 weighted and uh, axial flare sequence. This is the axial flare sequence and this is the sagittal T1 weighted MRI. And you can see that there is microcephaly, microcephaly with a decreased uh, craniofacial ratio. Okay, so there's microcephaly here with decreased craniofacial ratio. Also, you can see uh, that there is abnormal signal intensity areas here, which is uh, this abnormal signal intensity is involving the thalami, uh, as well as abnormal signal intensity and uh, mm, and cephalomalacia within the bilateral here insular cortex and subcortical white matter. So bilateral insular cortex here is showing the abnormal signal intensity along with the bilateral thalami. So uh, considering the top uh, imaging finding or the key imaging finding of microcephaly, so we are going to uh, give the top differential of microcephaly secondary to uh, neonatal ischemia. Uh, however, in the other differentials, we can put, put a primary microcephaly or hypoxic ischemic encephalopathy considering these signal intensity changes, hypoxic ischemic encephalopathy or torch infections. Uh, that is uh, CMV and toxoplasmosis and rubella and herpes infections. These they can also microcephaly secondary to these torch infections can also be included here, along with non-accidental trauma or fetal alcohol syndrome. So this is another case of a child uh, who presented a six-year-old boy who presented with seizure disorder and developmental delay. So these are the images. Now, as you can see, that uh, this is the sagittal T1 weighted MRI, and this is the axial T2 weighted MRI, and this one here is the coronal T2 weighted MR sequence. So, here you can see that there is absence of the corpus callosum. Uh, there is absence of the corpus callosum with a high riding third ventricle and extension of the medial cerebral hemisphere gyri. Uh, to the ventricular margin in a radial configuration. So these are gyri here, which are extending here uh, to the medial cerebral hemisphere to the ventricular margin in a radial configuration. This is the axial T2 weighted MRI, and it is showing that there is parallel configuration of the lateral ventricles with colpocephaly. Okay, there is parallel configuration of the lateral ventricles. Also. The uh, nodular foci of gray matter here are visualized along the subependymal uh, surfaces of the ventricles, which is consistent uh, with heterotopia. Now, in the coronal T2 weighted uh, sequence, you can see that there is this long horn configuration of the uh, frontal horns of the lateral ventricles. This is the long horn configuration or the Texas long horn configuration of the frontal horns of the lateral ventricles, which is secondary to the uh, medial indentation uh, by the white matter fibers, okay, the props here. And the third ventricle is elevated here in the midline, okay, so the third ventricle is here, the third ventricle is elevated. So these uh, imaging findings are uh, quite typical. Uh, for the case of a diagnosis of agenesis of the corpus callosum. And uh, this should be uh, the only diagnosis here because these imaging findings are quite typical for the absence of the corpus callosum case. Okay. Next case, uh, we are presented here with the, the sagittal T1 weighted MRI. And this is basically 20 months old boy who was uh, recently adopted with enlarged head scalp mass and developmental delay. So as you can see that this is the sagittal T1 weighted MRI and there is a large mass which is containing uh, the cerebrospinal fluid, the meninges and the parenchymal tissue which is uh, extending through this occipital bone defect. There is a defect here in the occipital bone and all of these uh, tissues, all of these uh, contents that is CSF meninges and parenchymal tissue are extending through this 
defective in this mass. Uh, so this protruding mass has a cyst within a cyst appearance and the cerebellum and the brain stem are also they are posteriorly displaced uh, with the compression of the uh, fourth ventricle uh, which is causing the marked hydrocephalus here so this is this is the hydrocephalus marked hydrocephalus and this is secondary to this thing uh, which is um, causing the uh, compression of the fourth ventricle so this is uh, basically the, as you can see that these are the intracranial contents uh, which are extending through this posterior calvarial defect into this mass. So basically the diagnosis here is uh, occipital cephalocele. So this is a case of occipital, occipital cephalocele or occipital cephalocele and uh, this should be the only diagnosis here because it is quite evident from this imaging picture. Okay, next case. This is the case of a 15-year-old girl who presented with long-standing gait instability and cognitive defects. So as you can see that uh, these are the axial titubated MR sequence and uh, there is absence of the cerebellar vermis here. As you can see that there is no cerebellar vermis here. So there is absence of the cerebellar hemisphere vermis, cerebellar vermis with fusion or failure segmentation of the cerebellar hemispheres, okay. So there is fusion or failure of the segmentation of the cerebellar hemispheres here. So this imaging finding, uh, the uh, finding of the absent vermis with fused cerebellar hemispheres is quite typical for rhombencephalosynapses. Okay, so this is a diagnosed case of rhombencephalosynapses. So the key diagnosis here is of rhombencephalosynapses. Next, we can see uh, that uh, there's uh, this is the case of a young adult who presented with long-standing uh, neurological issues. So as you can see that this is the sagittal detuvated MRI and there is cerebellar tonsillar herniation through the foramen magnum uh, with effacement of the cerebrospinal fluid at the craniocervical junction. And uh, there is uh, here you can see that there is cervicomedullary kinking. Also uh, there is beaked here you can see that there is beaked tectum. The tectum is beaked and it is enlarged massa intermedia and uh, there is low lying torcula here and also there is hypoplasia or you can say partial agenesis of the corpus callosum that is the rostrum is absent uh, rostrum is absent so there is partial agenesis of the corpus callosum and stenogyria as well so these imaging findings are uh, there is tonsillar uh, ectopia with the intracranial malformations. This is quite typical for carry 2 malformation, and uh, this is a diagnosed case of carry 2 malformation. Next, these are the images. The above three images of, are of another patient. This is another patient. So, patient A is a nine year old boy who also has got skin lesions. And patient 2 is this B is a 2 year old girl with skin lesions and visual loss. So as you can see here uh, that uh, patient in, in these images we can see that this is the axial T2 weighted MRI and you can see that uh, here the left sphenoid wing is dysplastic. Okay, there is dysplasia of the left sphenoid wing along with the here you can see that there is enlargement and uh, elongation of the left optic nerve here there is enlargement and elongation of the left optic nerve uh, along with the uh, the along with its kinking this the left optic nerve is kinking and a soft tissue mass is here you can see that this is the soft tissue mass which is overlying the left orbit and the temporal bone with intraorbital with intraorbital extension uh, the axial flare sequence here uh, shows similar findings 
uh, with the additional uh, regions of signal abnormalities involving the basal ganglia here, the thalami, and uh, as you can see here, the brain stem uh, and the dentate nuclei here in the cerebellum. So additional signal abnormalities are noted here. Here in the dentate nuclei of the cerebellum, the brain stem, the thalami, and basal ganglia. In the in this in the other patient, patient B, that is the two-year-old girl, we can see that uh, this is the axial titrated MRI, and this is the post-contrast uh, MRI sequence, and you can see that there is a bilateral optic nerve enlargement, uh, and also there is abnormal in increased enhancement of the optic nerves bilaterally. Okay, so in this patient, the optic nerve is enlarged bilaterally. Also, it is showing abnormal enhancement okay, in this patient. However, in this patient, only the left optic nerve is enlarged uh, along with dysplasia of the left sphenoid bone and these abnormal signal intensity areas. So, this is a case of uh, neurofibromatosis 1. This bilateral optic pathway gliomas, parenchymal signal abnormalities, bony dysplasia and the subcutaneous mass. These imaging findings are pointing towards the diagnosis of neurofibromatosis 1. So, both of these patients are suffering from NF1. Next case. So, this is 9-year-old boy presenting with hearing loss and multiple cranial nerve deficits. So, as you can see that uh, this is the axial uh, one-weighted MRI. And uh, you can see uh, that uh, with fat suppression, of course, you can see that there are bilateral enhancing uh, extra axial masses here. One is here and one is here. So these are bilateral extra axial enhancing masses in and expanding the internal auditory canals, uh, also the cavernous sinuses. Uh, along the anterior lateral left cerebellar hemisphere okay and uh, also here within the left middle cranial fossa so this left middle cranial fossa is showing a broad dural base mass there is a broad dural base of this mass and also there is a abnormal enhancement of the uh, cisternal segments of numerous uh, bilateral cranial nerves okay so there is abnormal enhancement of many of the nerves here so this is uh, a case again of uh, neurofibromatosis but here in this case as you can see that there are bilateral schwannomas here the key imaging finding is of the bilateral vestibular schwannomas so these bilateral vestibular schwannomas uh, along with you can say um, this could be meningioma so they are definite diagnosis they point towards the definite diagnosis of neurofibromatosis 2 that is an nf2 you see bilateral schwannomas so this imaging finding is quite pathognomonic for neurofibromatosis type 2 next case three-year-old boy presenting with seizures these are the imaging findings. Now this is the axial CT scan and you can see that there is uh, increased attenuation uh, throughout the right uh, cerebral hemisphere with the, the right uh, frontal uh, lobe. Uh, as you can see uh, in the all in the whole hemisphere there is abnormal uh, increased attenuation, abnormal increased attenuation however uh, in the right frontal lobe, we can see that there are cortical calcifications in a tram track configuration. Okay, so these are those cortical calcifications in a tram track configuration. And uh, in this image, you can see that this is axial T2 weighted MRI, and there is volume loss within the right cerebral hemisphere with decreased signal intensity uh, within the subcortical uh, white matter. This is the subcortical white matter, and you can see that there is hypointensity here. Now, here in this image, this is post-contrast uh, sequence. 
and it is showing the abnormal uh, leptomeningeal enhancement uh, over the right uh, cerebral hemisphere as well as uh, prominent enhancement uh, within here within the hypertrophied ipsilateral uh, choroid plexus. So this is the choroid plexus which is showing prominent enhancement. Normally the choroid plexus is they do not enhance to this much degree. So this is the abnormal enhancement of the choroid plexus along with the leptomeningeal enhancement here and uh, also you can see that there is calvarial thickening here. There is some skull thickening, calvarial thickening overlying the right frontal lobe. So this is a, a diagnosed case of Sturge Weber syndrome. Uh, the findings that are pointing towards uh, this diagnosis is this tram track uh, calcification here along with pile angiomatosis and cerebral parenchymal atrophy here. So this is a diagnosed case of Sturge Weber syndrome. Next, these are the images of an adolescent boy presenting with seizures. So as you can see that in the axial uh, CT scan, uh, there are calcified subependymal lesions and uh, also there are regions of uh, decreased cortical and subcortical attenuation and regions of here subcortical calcification. So these are the calcified subependymal lesions along with this increased attenuating or subcortical calcifications here. Okay, these are the subependymal calcified lesions along with these subcortical calcifications. And uh, this is the axial flare sequence and it shows multiple uh, focal wedge regions of uh, increased cortical and subcortical signal intensity here okay these are these uh, increased cortical and subcortical signal intensity regions here and uh, they are present within the posterior uh, left temporal lobe there is a here you can see that there is a, a small calcification in the posterior left temporal lobe here this is flare sorry this is the ct scan so the calcification will be hyperdense on the ct scan so you can see that there is a, this is the calcification which is present in the left temporal lobe uh, here you can see that there is a, a small subependymal nodule in the frontal horn of the left lateral ventricle this is that uh, subependymal nodule which is very faintly seen within the frontal horn of the left lateral ventricle also on the post contrast sequence you can see that there is a uh, enhancement of this frontal horn uh, of this nodule in the left frontal horn sub uh, the frontal horn of the lateral ventricle so this subependymal nodule is basically also giving homogeneous enhancement so considering these imaging findings uh, this uh, the imaging findings of partially calcified subependymal nodules along with regions of cortical or subcortical signal abnormality uh, we can make the diagnosis a confident diagnosis of tuberous sclerosis so this is a, a typical case of tuberous sclerosis next these are the images and uh, these are children of varying ages with the non-contributory findings clinical so this is a collage basically of the axial t1 and t2 weighted images uh, through the basal ganglia and the deep white matter uh, thalami at different stages of the uh, first year of life. Now, the images uh, from here to here, A to D, they show varying uh, degrees of progressive white matter myelination and uh, it is uh, characterized by uh, increased uh, T1 and decreased T2 uh, signal here, okay increase T1 and decrease T2 signal. So the regions of myelination are basically they are depicted earlier on T1 sequences. The neonatal T1 image here reveals uh, the myelination within the posterior limb of the uh, internal capsule and the ventral lateral thalami. Okay. 
so they are myelinated in the same neonate at 3 months of age myelination on t1 extends into the anterior limb it this myelination is extending into the anterior limb of the internal capsules and it has uh, progressed along the optic pathways now by 6 months of age uh, you can see that the internal capsules uh, and the genu of the corpus callosum uh, much of the white matter and a portions of the subcortical white matter are myelinated on t1 okay now this is the one year old picture uh, of the t1 signal intensity and it is quite similar to an adult brain and uh, these are the images of a two year old boy this is t2 this is flare sequence and uh, you can see that uh, the white matter signal intensity is uh, very much similar to that of an adult brain here these images show that they are, they are, the myelination is completed like it is very similar to an adult brain so these are just uh, images which are showing the patterns of myelination in different ages and uh, there is no specific diagnosis here so this is another case this is a young adult woman who presented with visual changes and transient numbness of the upper extremities so as you can see that uh, the axial flare images they show numerous uh, avoid hyper intense periventricular lesions uh, which are oriented uh, perpendicular here they are oriented perpendicular to the lateral ventricles uh, there is abnormal increased flare signal intensity noted within the uh, posterior limbs of the internal capsules also the uh, posterior uh, you can see that uh, the here the posterior limb of the internal capsule is showing hyper intensity also the posterior aspect of the uh, lentiform nuclei and also along the inner margin of the uh, splenium of the corpus callosum so this is the splenium of the corpus callosum whose inner margin is showing this abnormal hyper intensity also in the posterior limb of the capsule and the posterior aspect of the lentiform nuclei so uh, considering these multifocal regions of periventricular signal abnormalities so uh, the classic uh, imaging picture is uh, of multiple sclerosis so this uh, case is basically of multiple sclerosis that is demyelinating disease however in the other differentials you can put microvascular ischemic disease or uh, any other infectious or inflammatory process like lyme or sarcoidosis lyme disease or sarcoidosis or any other demyelinating disease or vasculopathy or cadasil uh, and suzak syndrome can also be present in the differentials this is a case of a 6 year old girl presenting with seizures and uh, these are the images now in the axial and the coronal uh, flare sequences you can see that there is a focal region of ill defined ill defined increased signal intensity uh, which is involving the right uh, frontal cortex and subcortical white matter uh, with blurring of the gray white matter junction okay here so this is the uh, increased uh, signal which is involving the right frontal cortex and subcortical white matter with blurring of the gray white matter junction so uh, this imaging finding uh, that is a solitary region of cortical or subcortical signal abnormality in a child who is presenting with seizures is uh, quite typical for uh, focal cortical dysplasia so this is a case of focal cortical dysplasia however you can put any low grade tumor in the differential along with gliosis and cephalitis and seizure edema next case this is a 4 year old boy uh, who presented who presented with new onset of developmental delay
So as you can see that in the axial flare uh, sequence and, uh, and coronal sequence, there, there are bilateral symmetric uh, confluent regions of uh, increased uh, signal intensity within the subcortical and periventricular white matter. Uh, also, you can see that the subcortical U fibers are involved here. Okay, and uh, it, it has a strikingly uh, posterior predominance. It is predominantly posterior. The post gadolinium axial uh, T1 weighted MRI is actually here. This is showing the nodular enhancement along the leading edges. So there is nodular enhancement along the leading edges. So this is uh, uh, confluent white matter lesions in a child. So there is, they are quite typical for adrenoleukodystrophy. dystrophy. So this is a case of adrenoleukodystrophy. dystrophy. Uh, however, you can put Adam in the differential along with any dysmyelinating disease or multiple sclerosis or uh, any atypical infection as well. Okay. So however, this imaging picture is quite typical for uh, adrenal dystrophy.